Disclaimer. Instead of calling this person by a name directly, since last time I used their content under the guise of fair use, they gave my entire channel a strike. Not a copyright claim, a whole strike. My first strike, in fact. I'll be editing their voice by shifting the pitch as well as blurring their face and handle. I'll also be making sure to add randomly timed overlays and sound effects to truly surpass any risk of this not being transformative enough. And of course, I will also be referring to this person as... Uh, rarely beast. Hopefully, this is transformative enough for you, buddy. And just to make sure to extra cover my bases here... Is the copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. If you on your own time decide to seek out this person's social media, I can only ask that you please don't do that. Don't exhibit any sort of hate or negativity towards this individual. And with all that said, I hope you're ready for this. Let's move on to the video. Now, I have already been having kind of a wild September due to some personal reasons, and this whole thing that happened this week has kind of been the icing on top of the cake. With the timeline of events, we're going to start from the very beginning on September 14th at 3.12 a.m. I received this email from YouTube telling me that I had my first copyright strike on my channel. It was a strike against my video over the topic of male gaze in video games and why it's an overall issue. This really confused me because in this 20 minute video, I was pretty confident that all, if not most of it, was my direct commentary on the issue. And I wasn't breaking any fair use of anything I used. Especially since my style of video and commentary across multiple videos on my channel has remained, in my opinion, pretty consistent. With all the nonsense going on lately on YouTube with Cody, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, among many others speaking out on this topic, I assumed it had to have been something wrong, a mistake of some sort, or just something that would be able to be solved or resolved easily since I'm a pretty small channel. I either post gaming videos, art videos, my own art since I'm an artist, or commentary videos on hot topics of the time or people in the gaming and art community, and all of my commentary videos fall under fair use because they are all under the guise of using them as education on a topic, entertainment on a topic, or commentary on a topic. I've had a few copyright strikes over the past year or two due to music I had previously thought was free use or it was listed as free use and that wasn't the case. But in my entire YouTube career, I have not had an individual see my content that I have done over them and choose to strike me. Then I saw that my video was copyrighted by the name Rarely Beast. I searched high and low through YouTube for Rarely Beast, and I couldn't find this dude anywhere on YouTube. The music I used is copyright free. I was really struggling to find where this person was coming from and what part of my video was striked. And then I remembered, ah, you. It seems the strike was against my channel for using this TikTok in my video, with the video just being at 20 minutes and the TikTok being less than two, for which I will play now with the proper transformative editing, of course, and ever so slightly sped up to avoid yet another strike on my channel. So at this point, everyone's already pointed out how male game designers like to heavily cater to the male gaze when designing female characters a lot of the time. This is an early concept design for Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. Well, let's call it what it is. Male gazy and very eagerly. Here are some more of the character designs that they were tossing around at that point in the process. I mean, it, like, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it's also like, it's clearly trying to sex her up. It's absolutely night and day, the way this looks like an actual, real human being. This doesn't look like a Disney princess, it doesn't look like a Barbie, and it certainly doesn't look like an anime girl. It looks like a person, a human being! And is she still gorgeous? Of course. But she's real, human being gorgeous. Not the kind of hot where I feel weird looking at her. Now I will play for you my clip from my video with the same TikTok being used, with, in my opinion, it being under fair use, under the guise of commentary, education, or entertainment. Issues with feminism and issues with female characters in video games. So at this point, everyone's already pointed out how male game designers like to heavily cater to the male gaze when designing female characters a lot of the time. 
So I'd like to highlight an example where they did the opposite. This is an early concept design for Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. Now the developers call it a more illustrative and expressive style, male gazy and very eagerly. Here are some more of the character designs that they were tossing around at that point in the process. I mean, it, like, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it's also like, it's clearly trying to sex her up. 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 But the design they actually ended up going with, the one that you play in the game, looks like this. It's absolutely night and day, the way this looks like an actual real human being. This doesn't look like a Disney princess, it doesn't look like a Barbie, and it certainly doesn't look like an anime girl. It looks like a person, a human being. And is she still gorgeous? Of course. But she's real human being gorgeous. Not the kind of hot where I feel weird looking at her. Game designers take note. This is how you do a good female character. Now, I unfortunately didn't catch this in time to see how the comments and stitches were coming along, but it seems like the poor guy was getting flamed. Uh, because it's TikTok and it's the, it's the internet, I'm sure too many people took it too far, and while some did try to educate him properly on the topic, I'm assuming a lot of people were just mean and spiteful and hateful, and he ended up having to turn off people's uh, comments. Now, I want to make something clear that I don't think a lot of people understand, and that is you can be wrong about a point as a man when it comes to something related to feminism or women, and just not be misogynistic. You can just be undereducated about this topic. Not all characters that are women that are made by men fall into the category of the male gaze. He even got it right at the end when he started talking about Aloy's design. And like I said earlier, he was so close. He was kind of right. He is right. Aloy does not fall into the category of a character that is specifically designed with the male gaze leading this design. Now, typically in these situations, you can do one of a few things as a YouTuber. Since this is my first strike ever, I can simply just wait 90 days for it to expire. It's a new system of grace they have, which is nice, but that's a long way for me to wait for my video to be reinstated on my channel. It's one of the ones with higher views, and it's one of the favorites I've ever done. So the choice to let YouTube hold it hostage for 90 days, three months, didn't sound that appealing to me. The next option is to dispute the claim and counter it, which brings up the opportunity for myself and the striker to go to court over this issue, which is something I don't want to do because, well, one, I'm disabled, so traveling for court if they don't have online uh, social distance accommodations would kind of be rough, and doing court without those proper accommodations would be really rough for me, but I'm willing to do that if I absolutely have to. The next option is to reach out to the striker and request that they mainly drop the strike. So, here is the email that I sent to Mr. Beast. Not that one. Evening. I saw you copyright struck, not claim, but struck my male gaze video on my YouTube channel. I'll admit I had a hard time finding out who did this strike as I could not find any YouTube creator or videos under this name. As I'm sure you're aware, TikTok clips fall under fair use on YouTube, especially since I always make it clear the clips and TikToks I am using are not mine that I am solely providing commentary on them. I credit the OG creator of the content and they hold no copyrighted music. I only know this is true due to my many other videos with TikTok clips where I credit the creators and comment on the TikToks and have not once received so much as a copyright claim, let alone a full strike on my channel. I can link these videos for you if you'd like to see for yourself. Had you just simply reached out and asked me to edit your content out, blur your content, or mute it, I could have easily edited this in YouTube Studio. I would even been willing to remove the video from my channel and edit your content out for re-upload if that would have sufficed. If this is a path you want to take with anyone who challenges your opinions or views, or just has commentary to say over your content, then I would suggest you also strike any and all stitches to your original TikTok. My plan is to counter your strike on my channel, which I honestly don't see myself losing. As I said above, it falls under fair use like most of my commentary content. I'm reaching out because I was hoping to solve this issue amicably as adults and would prefer it if you just removed your strike on my channel and we all walked away with less of a headache. However, if you choose not to, that's perfectly fine and understandable and I hold no ill will. Regardless of my counter to your strike and or your choosing not to remove it, the strike will expire in 90 days and will be gone. I'm willing to wait it out if I have to. I'll give you a loose 24 hour period to respond slash not respond before I make any decision best Camille. Taking a glance through Rarely Beast's content and overall demeanor, I expected either a polite nah, some response that directed towards a professional go fuck yourself, 
or if because he is a slightly popular content creator, I expected a direct email from a legal team or a legal representative telling me to fuck off professionally. What I got instead was a very interesting reply. Now, since Rarely Beast talks a lot about his legal team and uses a lot of language to suggest he legally knows what he is talking about, I'm going to reiterate that this email is censored. Nowhere in the email does Rarely Beast speak on his condition that this email correspondence remain confidential between the two of us. And unless he can prove these emails are unauthorized disclosure between him and a legal representative, the only thing I risk by sharing these emails is looking like a dick. Which I already am kind of a dick. Which I'm fine with. Camille. Had you reached out to me before making your video, as is standard practice across all media industries, I might have sanctioned it under certain parameters. However, as you did not, I saw no reason to reach out to you before issuing the takedown request. On the grounds that your video constitutes an instance of fair use that is legal standard based upon multiple criteria and proper accreditation is not one of them, the law takes into consideration the market effect of the use, the nature of the infringed upon material, whether the use represents a substantial transformation, and what portion of that material is used. Had you not used my TikTok in its entirety, it would likely meet the latter criterion. This is why, even for YouTubers who do provide transformative commentary, they use no more than a few seconds of source material at a time. But not only did you use the entire video, you failed to substantially transform it since, despite framing your commentary as a disagreement, you merely reiterated my original points. Additionally, YouTube based its decision to honor my claim partly on market effect. No matter what your intentions were, your video fails to meet multiple requirements for fair use. My legal counsel has instructed that since fair use is a very narrow legal standard administered on a case-by-case -case basis, and since it is not based on intent, I am on solid footing here. That's the legal side, but speaking person to person, I am seeking nothing more than the removal of this one video, or if it's easier for you, the removal of my original video from your video. I do not wish to harm your channel or for this to escalate further. Since you pointed that out, if I'm striking your video, I should also strike stitches on TikTok. Please note that there are none. I disabled them soon after posting that video, along with comments, because I was quickly mobbed by angry misogynistic gamer bros and Loesch fans. Loesch is an artist who did the concept art for Aloy. The latter group even attempted to dox me. To me, this is much more than a matter of copyright. It is about my safety. I am unclear as to what restrictions are placed on a YouTube channel after a strike, but I don't want to hamper your ability to create videos or monetize them. Therefore, I am willing to retract my claim if you're willing to keep the video down. If you can think of an alternate solution, I'm open to hearing it. Regards, Rarely Beast. Feel free to pause and do so and digest it if you're interested in every minute detail of it. The main points I am going to be highlighting are the ones I directly reference in my reply. The main points I'm going to highlight are his first line about being standard practice across all media platforms to get permission to use someone's content. To which I replied, the process of contacting creators to ask for their consent to use their content in YouTube videos is not standard practice across all media industries. I realize you have 50,000 followers on TikTok and I have a lesser following on all platforms combined, but this is not a standard practice and I'm unsure of who told you this slash where you came up with this. Curtis Connor, Noelle Miller, Cody Ko, KSI, Tiffany Ferg, Zachary Michael, Ready to Glare, Madison Harnish, Drew Gooden, Danny Gonzalez. I could go on for a while. These creators use way more than just a few seconds of transformative content in all their videos. All people who also did not reach out to the individuals in their videos to ask for their explicit consent to use their content for the purpose of commentary or education or entertainment. In this case, mine was both. Education on the topic of the male gaze in video games and entertainment because I'm entertaining. The second part I'm going to address of his email was him saying it wasn't transformative enough to count as fair use. First reason because it wasn't more than a few seconds according to him, which is where fair use is cut off. And me replying to his point saying, you either did not watch my video or even attempt to watch the parts involving yourself or just saw your own face for the duration of time it took you to copyright strike my channel and did not watch past that. Your TikTok that I included was transformed through text overlays, sound effects, pausing for commentary, general commentary before and after the video, and overall editing. There is no set time limit by YouTube of what a clip of content for another creator must be to count as fair use. I know because after this, I went and checked and YouTube does not list a time limit for fair use. 
The next point, which I took very seriously on his behalf, was him saying he struck my channel because he was worried about his safety. To which I replied, If your safety was a top priority, then you would have deleted your video on the topic from your own page which I'm assuming you didn't, specifically because it is one of your most viewed videos on your page at 209,000 views and is still up even though the stitches, duets, and comments are turned off. So by your own standards, you are allowed to have the content up on your page regardless of your safety, but myself having this content on my channel threatens it? I'm afraid this does not make sense. I have a timestamp screenshot of today, today being the day that I sent this email reply, that you still have that video on your page. Actually, today, as of September 16th, 8.55 p.m. when I'm recording this video, that video is still there. If it has or is been threatening your safety since you uploaded it, you have had since January 12th of 2022, that is eight months and two days of which I sent this email, in which you could have deleted it for your safety. My YouTube video was uploaded March 26th of this year. And that gave you six months you could have reached out and asked me to edit, change, or re-upload my content in some form to validate your safety. This also tells me you did not read my comments on the video as well, since none of them mentioned you or your video, and were more generally focused for the subject theme of the video itself. If there were any comments about your video, I can assure you none of them had anything to do with your personal name, brand, or threatened you in any way, shape, or form. So if the TikTok's existence on the internet is the issue and not my comments of my page or what I said in my video, then why is the video still on your platform? The next point, I think we're at four. <laughs> the next point is him acting, I don't want to say dumb because that sounds rude, but him acting less unwise than I know he is, that he didn't know what would happen if he struck my channel versus claimed it versus took the monetization from it. Finally, I do not take for you an unintelligent person, so do not patronize me that you are unaware what would happen if you struck the channel versus copyright claimed it versus took the monetization funds from the video views. The system is flawed sometimes, ergo the recent events with YouTube and copyright laws and strikes on people's channels, but YouTube walks you through a very extensive process to claim videos and striking entire channels. You luckily did not interfere with my ability to create more videos and had no impact to monetize in the future, but other than this video, unless you decide to directly speak on myself or my content on your platform, you can rest assured I will not be using your content in any capacity whatsoever. That you have my promise on. But here in the parentheses where I say, unless you decide to directly speak on myself or my content or your platform, you can rest assured I will not be using your content in any capacity again whatsoever. But you'll find out very soon after this bit of the video that that is what happened. And that is why I'm making this response video. The final part, which should be five if I've counted correctly, if not, sorry is him bringing up a legal team he definitely, in my opinion, doesn't have because if he did, they would have told him not to respond to me directly and to communicate only through his legal team or his legal representative. To which I said, since you've brought up the existence of a legal team, this should be our last correspondence. If you have any other questions or comments, then please send your legal team my way, preferably in a form in an email. To which then I can send any and all documented proof of my counter to the strike for your case. If you'd like to respond to my bullet points, that's fine, but I'm sure your team will warn you not to reply after mentioning them as any correspondence without their knowledge might reflect your standing in the future if it becomes a case. I'll leave this message telling you this is not my first situation where I've had to deal with legal teams before. This is true. I've had my art stolen before and that was a whole thing I had to deal with like a year and a half ago. I'll advise you that social media agents slash managers do not count as legally approved counsel for issues on copyright dispute, which is also a situation I've run into before. If this moves past civil correspondence after the counter to your strike and into a courtroom, I'll be sure to give you the details of my legal counsel and we can go from there. I'll provide my location if necessary and we will find a Zoom alternative depending on your state for a legal battle if slash when it comes to that. And as I said, after this email correspondence ended, I told him that since he brought up his very real legal team, who for some reason did not tell him to not directly reply to my email anyways, they should have told him to forward my email to them and they would have drafted a response on his behalf. We shouldn't talk anymore. I would be responding with a counter to the strike immediately, which I did. I sent all my screenshots, clips, videos, and evidence their way, there as in YouTube, and I considered the situation done with until the next steps of the counter process. That was until today. A follower slash friend of mine who knows about the situation told me I needed to check Rarely Beast's TikTok account since he vague mentioned me. I was fully expecting this since he didn't seem like the type where he would be able to not stand talking about the situation. 
But I guess the TikTok confused me because, well, see for yourself. And once again, I will be shifting the pitch of this section of the video. I will also have my persona overlay emote on top of the video. And instead of making commentary before and after, I will be making commentary throughout the entire video to make sure everything is very, very transformative and will pass any fair use claims. Which, little soapbox moment for me right here. My main goal to always show as much content from the people I was making commentary on, let's say Shane Dawson, Freckled Hobo, Janet, I always leave the bulk of the information because I would never want anyone to accuse me of trying to make someone look like what they are saying is not what they are actually saying. That is not something I ever want to do in my videos. My goal is to always represent the truth combined with other people's opinions as well as my own opinions. So I guess that finally did bite me in the ass because at the end of the day, I wanted to get the full message out of the person I was currently talking about, which this person, Rarely Beast, was not even the main focus of the video. But I digress. Like I said, this part will be extra transformative, no fair use will be broken, and I hope you enjoy. Copyright law is a completely broken system. Now, to illustrate this point, I'm going to talk about something that happened to me this weekend. Well, nothing really happened to you. If anything, you happened to me, buddy. If anything, I was enjoying... I don't even know what I was doing at 3 a.m. I think I was about to go to bed after a late night of editing or Twitch streaming or something, and I got that notification. So, I did nothing to you. You did the strike on my channel. I have to be a little bit careful about how I address it because it's a legal situation, but let's get into it. When we boil it down, the basic reason copyright exists is so that someone else cannot profit off of your labor. That is correct, but fair use specifically for the purpose of education, commentary, entertainment, etc., exactly like what I said in my email, allows other people to add commentary and transformative editing and speak about your content. Otherwise, stitches wouldn't exist on TikTok. You wouldn't be able to duet people. Everyone would stay in their own little bubble of content and you would never be allowed to share, retweet, or talk about anyone's content ever. The internet has totally broken the ability to fairly apply copyright law. I don't think the internet necessarily has completely broken the ability to promote copyright law. I just think it established fair use or else we would all be suing each other all day long. I definitely think there's instances where people get away with too much or they get just a little bit too close to the edge of stealing other content, but that's why fair use was implemented in the first place. For example, let's say, hypothetically, another creator takes your video and puts it into one of their videos, just pastes your entire video into the middle of their video. As long as the video is transformative, like mine was, and or is being used for the purpose of commentary, education, or entertainment, like I was, then it falls under fair use. There are certain instances in which they are allowed to do this. Yes, there are certain instances where they're allowed to do this, like what I just said. And that would be the principle of fair use, which is a subject for another day. Oh, he doesn't want to talk about fair use right now. All right. Let's assume that in this hypothetical, the content in question is totally yours, and what they have done with it does not fall under fair use. It does. Well, in that case, you pretty much have one option, and that is to lawyer up. No, actually, and I'm going to pause here, there are technically four options that are, exist here in this situation. Not one, there are four. The first one is you see that someone else is using your content, whether it's fair use or not, but in my case it is. You do nothing, you take the L, you move on, you just live your life. The next option is you reach out to the creator to change their video, edit you out of, your vid out of their video, blur you, mute you. YouTube Studio allows this nifty little thing where you can go into an already published video, you can snip it out or edit certain parts of it, and then you can resubmit it for publishing. You, as to my knowledge, don't have a YouTube channel and aren't a YouTuber and don't create content on YouTube, so I don't expect you to know this information, but if you would have done some research or just asked me, you would know. The third option is you copyright claim their video. 
that means you get whatever monetization or money from their video that they make. In my case, um, since I'm not very popular and I don't get that many views, it probably would have been less than $3. I don't want to act too big brained here, but I'm pretty sure that you wanted to strike my video, you saw that it wasn't going to be much money and then you moved up to the strike button. The fourth option is you copyright strike their entire fucking channel. So yeah, there are four different things you can do. Not one. Also, you made it very clear to me, you already have a legal team in your email. Either you lied about having a legal counsel, as I mentioned before, as a way to make me back down or threaten me or scare me, or you have legal counsel that told you to give up and you're not taking their advice. Because most professional copyright lawyers are not going to want to go to bat for you over a, a minute and a half TikTok in a 20 minute video by a rinky dinky YouTuber who has less than 2000 subscribers. Well, technically your option is to issue a DMCA takedown request to the site hosting your content. But ultimately what that means is lawyer up because all the other person has to do after you have copyright struck the video containing your content is to issue a counterclaim. Yes, that, which is what I did. Which is essentially them just saying, nuh uh. I sure did. And once they have issued that nuh uh, I didn't counterclaim, the only option you have is to go to court because YouTube or any other platform is not a copyright judge. It can't arbiter that stuff. So you have to go to court at that point. Which again is wrong. Uh, you can respect the fair use and drop the strike. If you refuse to do so and you do wish to take this to court, you're more than within your right to do so. You and I are on opposing sides of this situation, but I would never um, tell you that it's not within your right to go down a legal path if you if that's what you want to do, but you do not have to act like it's your only option because it isn't. You're right, YouTube isn't a judge or jury, but based off of this little snippet, you seem more than ready to let YouTube be the judge and juror when you believed it was in your favor and not mine. Now that I've countered that, I'm getting the feeling you're not feeling that way anymore. And this is where it becomes clear that the system does not care about a creator like myself it cares about people with money. I don't know if this was a direct dig at me. It's possible it wasn't. I know the reason you made this TikTok was because of our situation and myself. So just in case it is directed at me, I also don't have much money, dude. Most of my money goes to my chemo medication prescription. It's expensive. My medical devices, they're expensive. My insulin, it's expensive. My procedures and minor surgeries. I have another minor surgery planned for November. All this shit is expensive for me. All this work that I put into creating, into building a community, I don't get much out of it financially. I do it because it's something I love to do. It's something I'm passionate about. If the money doesn't go to my medical costs personally or whatever money I do have, it goes back into my community for ways I can improve it. It goes into my computer so I can make better videos. It goes into editing services so I can edit better. It goes into art supplies so I can make better art and do commissions better. I'm not made of money. Also, not to bring out the world's smallest violin, but Mr. Krabs bring out the world's smallest violin because at the end of the day, you have over 50,000 people in your community. Not many interactions across the board, obviously, through comments and interactions and likes, but you have a very large community. Your base community is large. Across my YouTube, my Twitch, my TikTok, and Instagram, I have less than 5,000, which that's not a complaint on my end. I love my community. I love my friends. I love the work I do, and I love the people that I work with. But out of the two of us, if anyone more is, if anyone is more likely to have the money out of the two of us, it's you. Because if you infringe on, for example, a Disney copyright, who oh boy, you're gonna be in court. They're gonna drag you into court, and they're gonna win and you're gonna owe them a lot of money. Why'd you bring Disney into this, mate? Why? There was no need to bring Disney into this. But fighting a legal battle in court is not only a lot of billable hours for your lawyer that you probably can't afford. Yeah, I know, dude. Ask my disability lawyers. Woo! Ask my social security legal team. Blech. Trust me, I know. And what that means is that small scale creators are totally at the mercy of anyone who wants to come along and reuse their content for whatever purposes. I feel like you are trying a little too hard to be relatable to the people in order to humanize yourself more, but you are not a small creator. C.H I made just a second ago 
but the disparity in our social followings are vast. I'm not bi some big bad corporation like Disney trying to punch down the little guy. That's not what the situation is. You made a misogynistic video about a video game character. Your comments and stitches and duets are off on that video on your page because people are calling you out for being misogynistic and for sexualizing a female video game character. People called you out on it. I used your TikTok to further my video on the subject of the male gaze, specifically in video games with female characters. You, at the end of the day, cannot always be in control of the narrative and fair use is in place for a reason. I'm sorry that you either A, embarrassed yourself with that video you made on TikTok or you regret what you said, but at the end of the day, it's still up on your page and I don't understand why you can have it up on your page, but I'm not allowed to have it on my channel. You definitely can't sell a shirt with Mickey Mouse on it if you're not licensed by Disney. I mean, I wasn't trying to claim your brand. I wasn't trying to claim the the brand's rarely beast. I wasn't trying to claim your image, claim your work for my own. I feel like you're comparing pears and my dick. Uh, I was providing commentary on the TikTok itself. You might not have liked that in your eyes, it wasn't transformative enough. You might not have liked that I was talking about how your views were misogynistic from the point of view of a man. Um, you might not have liked that I uh, poked a little fun at you, honestly, for you saying that they were trying to sex the character up because her shoulders and upper back and neck were exposed. But unfortunately, it's not up for you or me to decide what fair use is. That's for YouTube to decide. And while your initial strike went through, YouTube's system is not at peak performance right now. See my earlier examples of all the people who are having issues with YouTube and all the strikes going on and issues going on with larger creators. But if you want to find some poor Etsy artist and copy their designs, they're probably screwed. As a full-time artist and creator, this felt a little bit like a dig. You, you talk about both sides when you're using this comparison to a poor Etsy artist and Disney. Which one of us is Disney and which one is, of us is the Etsy artist? You both compare me to being Disney, like I'm the big bad corporation punching down, but also you're comparing yourself. Um, you're not big bad Disney coming to get me for selling a Mickey Mouse t-shirt. Which one of us is Disney in this? Either I'm Disney and I'm punching down or you're Disney and you're trying to grab your rights back from me, the little Etsy artist selling a Mickey Mouse t-shirt. I am not big bad Disney punching down the little guy. You are not big bad Disney coming to get me for selling a Mickey Mouse t-shirt. I fair use used a TikTok, you striked my channel, and now I think you're realizing a little bit it might not have been worth it. Now, there are a couple things I want to say about this video. The first thing is you give the impression in your caption and video that you cannot afford a copyright lawyer and yet you mention a whole legal counsel in your emails. Second thing is you speak about a situation that happened to you recently, but your legal team would have advised you to not post anything following this situation at all on social media. The reason I am is because I made it clear in my email correspondence that unless you say anything about me, my brand, what the situation is, I will not be responding. But because you did, I'm responding to your initial video that you created on TikTok. It's irresponsible and it could be used in court if we do end up getting there. If they totally exist and are totally real, then they would have told you to be as hands off as possible and let them handle it. So that means in my opinion, either they're not a good legal team, they are a good legal team and you're not listening to them when they're advising you to step back in and to keep your hands off the situation and your ego just won't let you do that, or they're just not real and you don't have a legal team and you lied. You see, you act like there's only one option for you. The only option that you can see where you come out on top. Spend a lot of money and try to hire a copyright lawyer, even though, again, I thought you already had counsel, but there isn't. There's a secret third thing. Remove the strike from my video. I already initiated the counter, so it's out of my hands. I can't uncounter your strike, but you are fully able to drop the strike at any time between now and I believe the next two weeks is the cutoff date. If you wanna fight with some silly little crunkly old bitch on the internet, go for it. I am willing, ready, and chock full of spite. Good luck. <laughs> I'm not the one